Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple of YouTube uh, personalities. Steve McRae and Katie Joy Paulson of Without a Crystal Ball, or whatever she's doing now. And it is on. So apparently, my interactions go back a little bit with both of them. I really appreciate what Steve has done for me in not a personal level, but his content and the show Non Sequitur. I've been a lurker for years, since 2009 or 2011 to an extent. But when the Non Sequitur show became really popular, I followed it all the time, got alerts for it, and started coming out of my uh, troubled times and became a little more interactive with social media, put myself out there a little bit more. Anyway, I remember when the non show brought Katie on. I didn't know who she was. But I'll go back to the beginning of when Katie was first brought on the non sequitur show. I gotta admit I was indifferent. I'm not sure if I remember liking her totally at first or not liking her so i don't have much of thought on that however when she first started doing her facebook videos i was one of the first pairs people in the chat saying hi i will usually what i would do is support everybody in general when they came on the non sequitur show and like i do with tv shows or things like that i'll watch a little bit of content See if it gets me or not. And I guess that makes a difference if I'm going to subscribe or follow them on Twitter. Or how much they connect with me in certain aspects. So I did notice from my own personal opinion that there was a little something going on with the way Katie thinks and expresses herself. And I think that's how my first interaction with her was in that sense. However, I tried to be supportive, like I did for most guests in the beginning, or well, most people who came on the show that I wanted to check out or get an interest in. Katie became more of a presence on the non sequitur show, and if people know or if they don't, Steve was cheated out of the show. He was a 50-50 content creator partner, and the show was stolen from him. That is another video, my, my non sequitur thoughts. And Katie always had a weird way of spinning a narrative. Maybe that's just because of the element she's in. Fine, she does the teen mom or alternative medicine type stories. And I, that's the angle I was going for, where I was interested in her, I guess, quote unquote, debunking alternative medicine. But it just grew into a drama type reality show type thing and it wasn't for me. But hey, you know, you got an audience out there, people like it, fine. However, like I said, she would twist the narrative. And when the show, the non sequitur show imploded because Kyle Curtis resorted to extortion and basically pulled bullshit moves. Katie Joy Paulson took Kyle's side without hesitation, without looking into the facts, without even bothering to ask people. And she would flip-flop on, oh, I'm a journalist, or I'm a reporter, or I'm a content creator. She'll spin the narrative to suit her purposes. But it didn't just end there. As someone who was in the community, act a little active at the time, I would go into live chats, and she would be spamming the live chat, calling Steve a liar, spinning, spinning the narrative to help her friend Kyle, who she defended vehemently. 
And then Steve responds in a reasonable way to general things that are going on about the show. And then she doubles down and starts accusing him of crimes. Defrauding the government, uh, sexual harassment. And again, she's in these live chats as a moderator for the non sequitur show. And she's still spinning this narrative. Trying to get the audience, which was pretty big for non sequitur show, to side with Kyle. And not in a critical thinking way. Not in a, oh, you know what? All right, so I might not like Steve. He, he he might be smug. You might consider him an asshole, whatever. But I I'm gonna I'm gonna go on and accuse somebody of defrauding the government and sexual harassment, amongst other shitty things, and claiming she had evidence for them. She never provided any. And every narrative that she spins that fails, that is shot down. She plays the victim card. Eventually, I guess the audience is mingled here and there. Steve McRae had just won uh, a lawsuit, which is waiting for judges to sign papers and then has to be finalized. So at this stage, we're not sure. We have to wait for Kyle to respond. But Steve lets it be known that he might sue Katie also because what she has said online and he has evidence i've seen it I, I mean like i said i was there from the beginning of this whole thing even before i was someone who reached out to katie on facebook and was friendly supportive sharing a couple of things here and there so the show implodes she joins kyle's side says disgusting things illegal things basically really becomes a disturbed woman she hears steve might sue her she makes an apology video which she basically doesn't apologize for she blames kyle for everything at the end of it she apologizes to steve for certain things and since steve is going through a lawsuit he's like fine you know what i accept it you were fooled by Kyle. They did a little bit of, um, of evidence showing. So Steve gave her some evidence she looked at. So the video comes out and Steve says, but you didn't apologize for the sexual harassment claim. And things like that hurt your reputation in a community like YouTube. Social media is not a forgiving place and easy spread rumors and false narratives propaganda spreads and people just don't look for the facts it's just how people are they're reactive they don't take time to think critically to hear a source they trust so katie spins the narrative she apologizes then steve uploads it to his site and he knows that's a offense for critical uh you can get a, a strike against your channel and Katie strikes it down, deletes her apology. And as this is going on, there are people in evidence being provided by sources I don't even know or uh, have a bias for or against. Now we're in a point where Steve's like four days away from waiting for this to wait to see if Kyle reacts to the last, uh, the latest court order or documents. And she has a habit of spending the narrative so bad, blocking people, that she has to reinvent herself. She'll retcon her history, delete certain things. She'll claim things that are just outrageous. And all you can fall back on is, Steve, maybe you feel uncomfortable or... Steve can be an asshole. I mean, how much are you going to hear the bullshit? So now she's trying to get this um, heat off her by trying to turn it on Unirock, who tried to reach out to her and be somewhat civil. I mean, 
nice to a certain point to try to get to the bottom of this. There are some accusations going on. Um, she keeps trying to throw Steve under the bus or set him up for some narrative. He has He's having none of it, which I wouldn't either. You have a man whose channel was stolen from him, at least or around, because no one has seen the books, $30,000 to a value of a show that was valued over 100000 or how that works. And he was, never saw a penny of it. You back the person who cheated him out of it without any evidence backing, without looking for anything. And you wonder why now people are looking at screenshots where you're being an asshole, Katie, and saying horrible things after a child passed away. And you wonder why people would just assume it's true. It works the same way. So even people who aren't critical thinkers who are seeing a trend are just going to be like, oh, yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me. So she's made so many bad claims, so many false accusations, so much heat she's getting from a community that values critical thinking and ethics and honesty. And she had a chance, an opportunity, because when you go back to her days of starting on the show, even if when the show imploded, she could have taken a neutral stance. She should could, she could have said, hey, look, I'm not going to support Steve. I don't like him. But I can't support Kyle, too. Let me get to the facts. Let me see what's going on. Because in her video with her apology, she starts bullshitting about, oh, I wasn't, I didn't trust this. I knew something was going on. But yeah, but you were able to, uh, whatever the word is, I'm not a fucking lawyer, but slander or defamation, whatever the uh, name of it is, you're just spreading lies. And some of them are really bad. You don't pull the sexual harassment card, defrauding the government bullshit. And not expect someone who values ethics and honesty to start tearing you a new one on social media. So Katie is now rebranding herself. She is not that bright in these in the way these things work, I guess. Uh, maybe I'm not either. But she's trying to change her usernames and loses her original one. So now somebody from Germany, who I don't know if he likes it too much, has her original Twitter handle. Her Facebook um, page has been deactivated. She now changed her Twitter twice. She deactivated her Instagram. And when you say, oh, you could still find out these things. You can find DMs and, you know, it doesn't matter if she blocks or she changes things. You still have the evidence. But people don't give a shit about evidence. So she could just reinvent herself Go back into the crowds that love her for some reason, and maybe it is a talent she has that I haven't looked into enough. Fine, I'll accept that maybe she does what she does well. But if you're looking at it from my point of view, she's just been a horrible journalist, horrible reporter, not fact checking, going on rumors, feeding into her own emotions and her own uh, love or, or friendship with Kyle, if that means. Uh, she was doing it for selfish reasons, I don't know. Like I said, I think she has... I don't like to... That's why I haven't really brought this up, is I don't. I think she has some mental health issues. They might not be super major, or whatever she's dealing with in life, or whatever has shaped her, has made her make these bad decisions. So she's got these different Twitter names. She's lost her Twitter handle. She's got to come up with new ones. And she'll spread these narratives that she got hacked, or... Uh, bullies are after her and they're targeting her I and mean, it's not that you spread lies about people on social media you keep it up you don't apologize for it and you do half half apology for certain things and you blame someone else they're going to come back and start tearing you apart again you haven't let it go he you're lucky he accepted your apology as it is, because I don't think I would have. I would have wanted a direct statement about the sexual harassment. And then she tries to spin the narrative. So you face it and you just deal with it. You come out, you say, look, I'm going through stuff. I'm not in the right frame of mind. Whatever it is, you apologize thoroughly for everything. Come clean with your audience, because according to what I've been watching, 
and listening to, you not only kept poking Steve, you you kind of crossed your own audience going after someone else. And uh, I think her name is Leslie. And now you're screwed because a good portion of your audience is starting to be exposed to what you are. And I think what you are is a very disturbed woman. You are backed into a corner. I guess you feel that way. Maybe you do believe you're being bullied and this seems like a uh, something that's unfair. But yes, I do have a bias towards Steve. But I do consider myself a critical thinker and I think secretly I would love to have something up on Steve to rub his nose in. Steve is somebody who has put out certain arguments and debates that I've spent hours without, I was, I've never mentioned this to him, I don't talk to him like we're uh, good buddies or anything, but I spent f like four hours opening up uh, books or looking through philosophy things to see if he's right or not. Now yes, he's human and we're going to argue and people are going to fucking be assholes sometimes. Uh, my first interactions with Steve were teasing him or or, um, you know, it was a little uh, abrasive. And then I reached out to him when I had the argument with Kyle and told him how much the show meant to me and how it saved me at a time where I was going through some dark stuff. So, yes, I do have a, a bias, but I try to temper it with an open mind, critical thinking, being self-aware. So, from somebody as a fan who's been there from the beginning who's watched this all unfold, who maybe now is getting a little more of a voice because I have my own YouTube channel and I'm trying to use it as a form of therapy by just getting my thoughts out. I think Steve McRae is justified in what he's doing, however you want to, whatever you want to call it, drama. And I can understand where you have a fan base that wants you to do your science shows and philosophy shows, which I love and I'm a huge fan. But I understand human nature. You're not going to have people with a, a chunk of an audience out there spinning a narrative. And not, it's, just, it's not even, an, you want to spin a narrative like, oh, yes, he was an asshole. Oh, hey, he's smug. Uh, you know what? I don't like the way he treats me. He talks a certain way. Fine, you know. Whatever. But you don't start throwing accusations and tarnishing a man's reputation in a way where he... Um, makes a living off the internet and YouTube and supplying content to his fans. You're going to do that? Fine. You want to use um, he's a meanie, whatever. Fine. But you can't do the severe allegations, not apologize thoroughly. And I can't see why you wouldn't have uh, opened your hand in friendship because I get a feeling the community would have forgiven you at a certain point and just understood we can get wrapped up in things. We we love our friends. We we defend them without thinking about it right away. Oh, how could this person do this? There's no way uh, Kyle could be lying. Uh, this is bullshit. And like Steve, I agree. But she admitted to being lied to and she fell for it. Fine. But you now you're making your own hole. You're digging your own holes and you're just digging them deeper and deeper you've got no way out so you just twist things this has gotten to be bullshit it's something i don't mind seeing steve talk about but i can see where the audience wants to hear other things i say let him do it just steve just keep doing what you're doing okay you're human you are justified in these things now, however, I would try to be honest and say if you went too far, and maybe I would be quick to uh, reach out to you in that case, I, I think I would, but my recommendation is to breathe <laughs> three to five seconds in through your nose, slight pause, let it out through your mouth, five to eight seconds, and this will be your focus, Steve. Your balance, we do that before your shows, during your interviews. 
and I think you'll be perfectly fine. Katie Joy Paulson, on the other hand, I think needs to work things out. If it's not seeing somebody professionally, it's reevaluating and become self aware, do a little bit of meditation, whatever you gotta do. And question your strongest beliefs always. That's like a general rule. Whatever you believe in so strongly, just dissect it. If you find out you're right, you're right. And if you realize you could be wrong, admit it. You can still probably save what you have of your YouTube career. But you can't keep reinventing yourself. So you got to deal with this. Because, as I say in my description, it is on. Um, someone like Steve has a right to defend himself. It's not bullying. You keep putting out shit. You keep talking shit. Backing up lies and obvious claims. You're asking for it. You, it's not bullying. Now you want to talk about people showing screenshots and saying, how can you know it could be it's faked? Fine. You, you want to put that narrative out there? That you didn't do, you didn't say this horrible shit in a in a um, DM, and the other side hasn't provided the evidence or the proof of the person. Fine, even if the Steve McRae's examine the evidence and give their points for why they think it's real, sure you have a right to say you know what, even if you're fucking lying, I don't you know, whatever, sure. I didn't say this. And that, that I think is fine. I think that's, um, you know, conflict can lead to resolution type thing. But you can't spread these lies and accusations, keep backing them up, lying about other people. Uh, when your audiences cross over, you start throwing your own people under the bus. This is not good, Katie. Uh, help yourself if you're not going to go get the help. And I think Steve McRae, I hope you have a good time on your trips. I hope you work this out. I hope you get the settlement and what you do from the show. And I don't think you should take anybody's shit. You just lie enough and you just twist your, keep twisting narratives and trying to lie to people no matter how many times you change your name no matter how many times you rebrand yourself it, you're only going to get these sycophants who are just going to love you no matter what your reputation will be tarnished you'll hit a threshold that you won't be able to go past and eventually what? you'll fade away so you can't have people going around uh, who show a trend this is not something that's out of nowhere. If anybody wants to look at the evidence, you can go around and uh, do it the right way. Things I think people have to be a little bit aware of what their biases are and maybe develop a way to counteract it. It could take a little work, but I think anybody can do it. It's just not being reactive. You know, so fast, you let it sit a little bit, think about it from different angles. And, and also how you're going to look into it. I find myself always looking into the other side of things. I'll, I'll watch lectures on theist um, or right-wing stuff. And I want to know what their arguments are. I want to be able to have an informed opinion. So, good luck, everybody. I hate to jump on people who I think might have some issues. And... I guess I would hope it works out, but anyway, those those are my thoughts on this, I don't know what you call it, feud, drama, bullshit, nonsense, but to someone like Steve, it's not, it's serious, it is his reputation, so I'll find whatever content Steve wants to put out there, if I'm in mood to watch it, I'll watch it, if not, I'm not, I don't hold it against him for being human. And defending himself. I don't believe it's bullying. So. 
that'll be it. Till next time, everybody. I'll see you then.